In August of 2021, Avon was a six and a half year old boy. He was a happy kid living the best life ever. Um, he loved playing outside with his brothers and his cousins. They're building forts, fishing, and chasing frogs. He loved chasing frogs. He had a, an amazing imagination and had a smile to light up many room. He especially loved his brothers. Avon is a true miracle. He was born 13 weeks early, only weighing two pounds, five ounces. He spent 87 days at the NICU at UNC. And then when he was six months old, he survived an extended cardiac arrest. He loved telling people that his heart stopped and he got a second chance at life. On August 7th, we had plans to spend the day playing putt-putt and getting ice cream with friends. Even complained that his head was hurting, but he still wanted to go. He got a hole in one and had a big ice cream cone. Little did we know that that would be the last ice cream cone he would ever eat. Woke up the next morning with a fever of over 103. He said his head hurt so bad and he was throwing up any time he would move. It was in the height of the pandemic and we feared that he had COVID. So we took him to the local urgent care and had a COVID test and had him check him out. He tested negative for COVID and they thought maybe he had strep throat. So they gave us um, an antibiotic and sent us home. Back at home, he even kept getting worse. His fever was not controlled with Tylenol or Motrin. He was sleeping all the time. He would wake up and answer our questions and then fall right back asleep. We decided that we should take him back to UNC Children's where um, he had been so many times before. They did some blood work and did see that his white blood cells were extremely elevated. Someone came in and said, maybe we should just do a spinal tap to rule out meningitis. They attempted a spinal tap in the middle of the night, um, but they were not successful in getting any of the fluid. They decided to admit us under an abundance of caution. And um, at three o'clock on Monday, a spinal tap was completed. Immediately following the spinal tap, he sat up, he was happy, he smiled, but it wasn't long before he was back sleeping. His fever rose even higher. He became delirious. He didn't know who we were. He didn't know where he was. His blood pressure was all over the place. Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock in the morning, and the doctor came in and he said, we need to talk. And the doctor first said the words, Naglaria phalari and primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. I'd never heard of it before. And I did what every mom does that they tell you not to do. I walked to the bathroom and I Googled it on my phone. <laughs> and I saw the statistics pop up, 99% fatal and only five survivors ever in the United States. I walked back into the hallway and I saw the doctor and I showed it to him on my phone. <laughs> and the look in his eyes told me everything I didn't want to know. Over the next few hours, we brought our twin eight-year-old boys into the hospital. We made crafts with Avon. We read a book together. At Avon's request, we even sang the Power Rangers song. He was awake and would talk to them. In our hearts, we, we knew that this could be the last time they were ever together. As soon as they left, we made the difficult decision to put Avon onto a ventilator. The doctors had been in correspondence with the CDC and they had recommended a course of treatment. It involved several medications and it involved cooling his body temperature in hopes of reducing the swelling that we knew was gonna come. We gave him a big hug. He wrapped his arms around us and we told him we'd see him soon. He said, I love you. And those were the last words that we ever heard from him. We found out that UNC had Miltefazone on hand. It was only one of 27 hospitals in the United States that had this medication that had been used 
in addition to several other to treat Pam. We were excited. We felt like we had hit the lottery because we were at a hospital that had it. Soon after, they cut his beautiful white hair and put a drain in his skull to help relieve the pressure. And then we sat and we waited for a miracle. People all around the country came together and were praying that Avon would be number six. Wednesday, we received official diagnosis from the CDC. They confirmed that it was in fact Naglaria falleri. It was only then that they started asking us about freshwater exposure. It was summer in North Carolina. Our family is an outdoors family. We swim all the time. Avon had been swimming multiple times that week, one of which included swimming in a pond on August 2nd, six days before his first symptoms started. He began treatment 10 days after exposure. Wednesday, we just waited. We sat there and hoped that the medicines could start working before the pressures took over. Thursday was a rough day. There were multiple times on Thursday when Doctors had to be called in um, to stabilize him. At 4 a.m. on Friday morning, a doctor told us that there was nothing else that they could do, that the pressures in his brain had caused irreversible brain damage. And we then had to make the hardest decision of our life. We laid in bed with him. We told him how much we loved him. We held his hand. And we turned off the machines that were keeping him alive. His heart didn't want to stop. That same heart that had had to be resuscitated when he was six months old kept beating. But the amoeba had taken over his brain. And Friday morning, August 13th at 6.26 a.m., our little boy passed away. Uh, immediately following Avon's diagnosis, we found out that there wasn't a lot out there a lot about early detection. There wasn't a whole lot about treatment, uh, diagnosis. We found out a lot of information from families' websites that their child had passed from the same illness. Whether in the medical community, um, there's just a lack of knowledge and a lot, lack of research. What we also found is the extreme lack of funding. Nagleria falleri is a single cell amoeba that is found in all bodies of fresh water, including lakes, rivers, ponds, streams, and hot springs. It can also be found in improperly chlorinated pools and hot tubs. The infection occurs when the organism enters the nose and travels to the brain where it causes PAM. Infections occur primarily in the summer months in areas of the world where the temperatures are warm for prolonged periods of time. In the United States, most cases have occurred in southern tier states. But in recent years, there has been documented cases throughout the country. Keeping out of fresh water, keeping your head above the water, and wearing nose plugs are ways to prevent possible exposure. It is also necessary to ensure that pools, hop tubs, and splash pads are properly maintained. There has also been cases of PAM from contaminated water systems involving tap water for nasal irrigation, and other religious practices. PAM is 99% fatal and 100% preventable. Immediately following Avon passing away, we realized we had to do something. Only three days after, we created Amazing Avon's Quest for Amoeba Awareness. Our mission is to improve and advance early detection strategies and medical treatments for infections caused by Naglaria falleri and primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, also known as PAM, while increasing awareness within the medical communities and the public. We have a vision of a world with no more deaths from PAM. We also model safe swimming activities and engage in community outreach projects to give back to our community. If even we're here, he would tell us to play hard, use your imagination, to be silly, and say I love you. He fought for everything he wanted, and we're gonna fight to help cure this awful disease. We're devastated about the loss of our amazing Avon. We're always gonna have a hole 
in our hearts and in our family. But we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that no other family has to go through the same tragedy as we have.